When they went to Ballard's Valley, before they torched, before they burnt the great house, they broke into the cellar. And in the cellar was a lot of wine and spirits. And so they started drinking and celebrating yet too early. And it was whilst they were there that the treaty which had been signed with the Maroons in 1739, which was about 21 years earlier, um, indicating, and the treaty said that, the Maroons had an obligation to capture any runaway. And so Taki was called a runaway, having left the plantation along with the hundreds of other persons. Mm -hmm. So the Maroons were called out to satisfy their part of the treaty. Mm -hmm. And so it was that the Maroons and the militia were in, and engaged Taki's bands mm -hmm. in the woods at Ballard Valley. And they, run, they, they, they won that first skirmish. They did. They won that first skirmish. But as I indicated, their bullets were not going through. Yeah. Uh, because they were not properly formed and they were going uh, awry. And so the second skirmish was not as, not, not as successful as, as the first one. Now it's very interesting you ask that question, you know, Sean, because there was in fact a slave known as Yankee who went and went through St. Mary, went from St. Mary through St. Catherine into Spanish, through Troja into Spanish town to warn the governor. And that was why there was an early um, awareness of the revolution because the whole thing was intended to be so secretive that no word would have reached into Spanish town um, until they had captured almost the entire St. Mary and, and adjoining St. George's and so on. So Yankee went off and warned uh, the persons that Taki had revolted. Yes, it, it is true that there are persons who are going to feel an obligation, um, or if it's not an ob ob obligation, they are going to feel some form of hatred or opposition to the revolution. They do not feel that it is in their interest, or maybe because of fear or misunderstanding of what the revolution is all about. Some persons are comfortable with their status and do not like the apple cart to be upset, so to speak, and will do anything to prevent it, even when it is not in their favor, yeah, so to do. Man. Yes. Well, well, Marcus, that's very, very interesting. Now, Marcus Garvey, and he came in much later. He was born toward the end of the, of the 19th century. And Marcus came into this because he believed, just like Taki did, that Africans and persons of African descent can successfully compete with any other ethnic um, or, or racial group on equal terms in, in the world. All they need are just the resources which are naturally theirs. So Garvey's cry was Africa for the Africans. Now Garvey came from adjoining St. Anne to, to the west of where we are here. And he journeyed, as a matter of fact, for a time, Taki, um, Garvey lived here in Port Maria, oh, yeah? yes, for just a brief while. He was a printer. He, he had friends here and he came and stayed here in Port Maria for a brief while before moving on to Kingston where he settled down as a, as a printer. And from there he left, of course, and went to, into the United States. But all of these persons were influenced by the effort that Taki had made because if in those very primitive, so to speak, conditions he had been able to organize rebellion for 19 months, then there is no question that with the better resources, more available resources, uh, more aware people and so on, that we would not necessarily by violence, but by diligent study and approach and by discipline, order a better system of life for the persons of African descent without violently overthrowing or upsetting the persons of other ethnic or racial groupings. That is, was never Taki, um, Taki, Taki's intention. It was never Marcus Garvey's intention. It was never ever the intention of Paul Vogel. It happened because those persons with whom they were negotiating thought that violence was the only, uh, only, only currency with which to deal with them. Oh, he, here we have um, one of the several canons that protected the Port Maria Harbor. Now, these cannons are not the originally uh, founded ones. Um, these were taken at a, a later date. The Fort Hallin was built 
um, during about 1756 to, uh, and finally commissioned in 1759, the year before Taki's Rebellion. And some of the earlier cannons are, uh, have been removed and are lying, um, falling off uh, of, of their carriages and are lying um, below us at the edge of the cliff. This is one of the older cannons, I believe. These are some of the, the, the newer ones which came in as replacement because larger cannons were brought in as the fort was improved and, and the number of cannons increased over time. Uh, so the, these cannons are just about 200 years old. The older ones lying down there were brought in in the 1750s, so that they would have been about 250 years old. But they fell, they have fallen off the promontory. They were near to the edge, and with rock slippage, they have fallen further down, down the, the ledge. Yeah, yo, the ones lying are the older ones. The ones on, on the gun carriages, no, those are the, the ones which came in later. They, with, with, with the recoil, uh, when, when they fired, um, uh, the, these had a, a, a range, uh, the, the, the ships entering into the east of the Cabrita Islands, they would ensure that no ship would enter into the east of the Cabrita Islands. These huge guns would, would fire on them as they rounded the promontory there and would try to enter into the, the, up the, the Paju River, mm -hmm. either end up the mouth of the Paju River or come around the Cabrita Island to enter into the mouth of the, the Ochum River. Now, uh, what's going call it? Would that big island be like a shape for like the, uh, the ships coming in? Oh, yes. The, the islands serve, the island, the Cabrita Island serve two purposes. One, what is Cabrita Island? What is that? The Cab that's the name of the island, Cabrita. In the middle right there? Yes, that's the island in the middle there. Um, that's in, 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 that served, serves as a breakwater um, so that even when the northeasterly winds are coming in, to, to the lee of that, you would have um, a, a calmer area and the ships would shelter in, um, on, 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 on the other side of it. And the second thing that it did, uh, that it provided a sort of getaway for, 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 for ships because sometimes ships coming from the east would not know that there would be a man of war hidden to the, the western side of the Cabrita Island. And that is where what is that? a man of war would be a British warship. Oh, so is a ship always there? Yeah, there was usually a ship hidden to the western side oh. of it. Oh. And so these guns would, would, would carry out the, 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 the task of firing on that ship. They would go to the east of the Cabrita Island and then the man of war would back them in. Jamaica is, was centrally located along the shipping lanes from the um, South American and North American, from, from the Central American mainland, ships transporting goods from the Spanish mainland into North America or, along, or into Europe, that Jamaica more or less stood along the main shipping lanes, mm -hmm. as tried the main shipping lanes. So one, it was strategically located. Secondly, is the fact that it, had, it was very important as a colony, being a major exporter of sugar. It was, it was the height of the, of, the, of the sugar industry in the 18th century, mm -hmm. and Jamaica, along with um, Saint Dominique, Haiti, mm -hmm. was one of the major producers of sugar uh, in the Caribbean. And so this was money, represented wealth for the mother country. So therefore, countries such as France and, and Britain didn't play out their, their, their wars in Europe alone. The Caribbean was the theater in which they, they, they carried out their differences, which they played out their differences. And so they would seek to capture territories mm -hmm. And, and this was almost like chess, chess pieces on a board. You, you take this, I take that, and so it almost determine the outcome of the war, so to speak. This was the, the powder room here, um, and it, it kept the shot and, and, and powder. Um, not so much a shot, I should say. This kept the powder and the muskets were kept elsewhere. Um, to my right is an area which was used as, as a galley. Um, the galley is where food was prepared. Um, but in here, this, this, this kept the, it was built, solidly built, so that in the event of any accidental ignition of... It's not going to blow up anything else, so it is built several feet thick. It's several feet thick. Several feet thick. 
and of, co of course it would explode, but um, it would be more or less contained, and it is built inside in such a way to, to, to deflect the explosion inward, almost to create an implosion rather than an explosion, so that the thing would, would be collapsed, it would direct the force. It was properly engineered to direct the force of the blast on, inwards onto itself. Here we have a better view of Port Maria from Fort Haldane and the hill where we're looking across there, the higher promontory, the higher hill, is where um, the, there was a tack, the frontier great house. The slave quarters were a little lower down and that is where Taki left but did not come directly across the harbour because that would have been too obvious. They went east words as if they were going to go to their farms and to their bush because uh, each slave was given a little area that they could go and farm their provision ground so they left as if they were all going to their provision ground to throw off anyone that would have happened to have seen a group of men going early in the morning so they went went east forded the the the, the Paji river then came westwards along the beach then forded the Ottram river came across came across and then climbed the cliffs here at the eastern side of the Fort Haldane. Carburetta Island and it provided protection for the Ma British Man of War which was usually stationed to the western side of it and totally invisible to anyone, any French ship rounding the point east of the Carburetta Island. Whilst the naval guns would now set up a barrage uh, of, of, of fire on the ships and they would race to go behind the Cabrera Island, that is to the east of the Cabrera Island, and there they would be cornered by the man of war rounding upon them. The church, in fact, was, um, was, was, was built just at, toward the end of and the abolition of, of, of slavery. Um, no, it, it was not used to, to hang anyone. There is no no artifactual evidence, no nothing at all, or, or documentary evidence, no dungeon, anything at all to suggest, no anecdotal story, no textual message to suggest that it was used for any such thing. And there is hardly any likelihood of it having happened as the, the church would not have been overtly used in such a way um, to, to, to punish slaves. Uh, the, the, the only thing about the church is that there are um, a few of the more senior, uh, or I should, if I should use the word, members who are interred in the, in the church. They're, they're, they're buried in, in the church itself and, and some are buried on the outside of the church. Okay. Yes. So that's the only thing I would say that um, it is different from, um, to, to many of the other churches, although some of the other churches have graves inside the churches as well. Fort Haldane was perfectly camouflaged so that the French ships coming in would not readily identify that this was a, a fort. It would look like any other normally wooded promontory on the Jamaican coast. And so the plant is planted a number of trees, flowering trees. One tree that was planted from that time was the St. Vincent tree here. And this tree is over 200 years old. Many persons who are familiar with it know it as the quick stick and that it is a very slow growing tree, tree and that it has been pruned over time, devastated by hurricanes, chopped down but it continues nonetheless. So this tree is over 200 years old and you can see um, anyone would, would take a cut tree it could count the annual rings but they would have to count it from the, the trunk there because have you see it has branched off into several branches and um, would indicate that it is over two centuries old. Oh, uh, no, I don't have a problem answering that. There are two things about it. One, when, when visitors come to Jamaica, some of them come for a sort of nostalgic feeling. And, uh, you know, nostalgia has nothing to do with memory or recollection. Nostalgia is just a hankering after something which you thought might have existed or, or something like that. And so the idea and the vision they have of Jamaica is of this plantation um, society where persons dress, are dressed in, in uniform and, and which serve them. And, and um, 
Yes, because truly George Beckford says in his, in his wonderful book that we are still a plantation society, only that we have, the, the, the rules have changed a, li a little. So they come, frankly, I don't have a, a, a difficulty with it because I have been inside the hotels and there's mutual respect from guests to workers and from workers to guests. And uh, the uniform doesn't say much. Um, if, if that is what makes them happy, I have no quarrel with that at all. Um, the uniform in some of the hotels are not really the colonial. In some hotels it is really a sort of cheery Caribbean floral dressing. In some, in some, in some hotels it is rather skimpy, in some it is more formal. So one gets a potpourri of, of uniforms all around. Does, doesn't matter if what makes them happy and keeps them coming, fine. We are a warm and, and, and wonderful people. So, so they can come. <laughs>